We'll now discuss partition matrices, what they mean, and kind of how we deal with them. A partition matrix is just a matrix that we break into sections using vertical and horizontal lines. And we've actually been dealing with a particular partition matrix throughout this whole series, which is the augmented matrix. This is a partition matrix because we do break off a section using these vertical lines. And these can be used in several different applications, essentially where we want to break off different sections of the matrix that might represent different things. Here is another example of an arbitrary partition matrix, where we have this really big matrix that we've broken up here into six different sections. And a lot of times, instead of dealing with this very big, complicated matrix with all of these bars, we'll do what's called a block matrix, which looks like this. It's essentially a matrix of matrices. The first entry here, the A, represents this entire top left region in our matrix. B would represent the top middle region, C the top right region, and then the same thing on the second row. We'll use these letters to represent these huge different partitions of these partitioned matrices. And this is usually how we deal with partition matrices, is in this block matrix form. Let's consider these two block matrices, and we want to multiply them. It's important to realize that O represents the zero matrix, where all the entries are zero, and I represents something that looks like the identity matrix. So order is important in our matrices. So when I multiply my first row by my first column, I get A times W plus B times I. My first row times my second column, I have A times zero plus B times X. I then move to my second row to get zero W plus CI, and then finally zero times zero plus CX. We can then simplify this. Anything times the identity matrix is itself, and anything times zero is zero. So this is what I end up with after our multiplication. This matrix AW plus B, BX, C, and CX. Here I want to find the inverse of this partition matrix. Essentially what I'm going to do is consider that we have another matrix next to it. We have no idea what this matrix looks like. And we know that it's equal to the identity matrix because this is just the definition of an inverse. And the idea here is that I want to try to figure out what this WXYZ matrix is. In addition, we're going to assume that all of our matrices here are square, which is an assumption that we'll need to finish solving this. Multiplying would give me AW plus BY. The next entry, AX plus BZ. The second row, I would have a 0 times CY and a 0 times CZ. And this would still need to be equal to the identity. And essentially now what I've done is given myself four different equations. I'm going to start with the equations that come from the second row of the matrix. CY equal to 0 and CZ equal to I. When we first learned about matrix multiplication, we pointed out that just because two matrices multiply to be zero does not mean one of them is zero. So let's start with this second equation. Our invertible matrix theorem says that if I have two matrices that multiply to be the identity, they are inverses, which means Z is just C inverse. So now I have this nice thing for C, for Z. And we can go ahead and put that into our matrix. The fact that C is invertible 
and I now know that means I can multiply both sides in this first equation by the inverse to get that y is actually zero. So now I know what two of my matrices look like. We'll now move to the top equation. The first one, aw plus by is equal to the identity. I know that y is zero, so this is now just aw is equal to i. And the fact that they're square now tells me that w is equal to a inverse. So now I know what w looks like. The only thing I'm left with is x, and that comes from our final equation. ax plus bz is equal to zero. Well, I'm going to subtract this b z to the other side and go ahead and say that z is actually c inverse. Now I can multiply both sides by a inverse to get that x is negative a inverse b c inverse. Running out of room a little bit, but we can fit it in. Minus a inverse b c inverse. So now I have a formula for the inverse. 